Guys, we have new hardwood floors in the kitchen. I can't even believe it. And it was so much work. Oh my goodness. Still having nightmares about this project, but it was totally worth it. And I'm going to take you guys along with us and show you the entire process, just in case this is something you're interested in tackling yourself but we are just so pleased with the results and I cannot wait to share them with you, so stay tuned. So a few weeks ago, I told you guys about our new honed granite countertops. We had them installed and they are absolutely beautiful. I was looking for something that reminded me of soapstone. Our countertops before were Corian, kind of like an acrylic resin material. They scratched easily. And so we are just so pleased with these beautiful new honed granite countertops. And I kind of took you guys along with me as I brought all of my decor back into the kitchen and played around with uh, just some of my kitchen items. And I did that with you uh, a few weeks ago. And then last week I did some spring decorating and I even added a few spring touches to the kitchen. And that was a lot of fun as well. But there was one, uh, one holdup that I had with these countertops. As much as I loved them, I just felt like they unfortunately clashed so much with our existing slate floors who were installed by the previous owners. They are beautiful floors. I just, I've never been in love with them. They're quite colorful when you look close up. I think this is like a Brazilian slate and so you've got all kinds of colors going on and I just really felt like the two materials clashed. So <laughs> as you guys can see we decided to go ahead and remove the slate flooring and let me just tell you this was so much work. I just owe so much to my husband for all of the hard work that it was to remove this slate. Oh my goodness you guys. Now you can see the original flooring underneath of the slate and there's a couple of reasons why we couldn't restore that flooring. First of all, you can just see what a mess it was. Every time he tried to remove the slate, it would just fall apart into a million pieces. And honestly, that's what happened to me all the time when I vacuumed and even just walking through the kitchen, it would tend to chip, but it was quite the job and so, I don't know if you guys have been with me for a very long time, but you know that we re refinished the, the original wood flooring all throughout our home, and we just didn't want to have to go through that process again of getting the huge belt sander and, you know, and, and doing all that. So, plus the floors were quite damaged. You can see the glue that's been left behind from the linoleum that was installed. Uh, our home was built in the 1930s, so probably in the 50s or 60s, I don't know someone installed some <laughs> laminate flooring which is just such a shame and you can even see in some areas where you know they had to piece the boards together in order to lay the slate so saving the original floors just wasn't an option for us it wasn't something that we really wanted to tackle and you can see my husband just using a crowbar to try to get and even a sawzall <laughs> to try to get the uh the cement board up but here's a little piece of some of the linoleum uh in one portion of the kitchen so that that's another reason why we weren't even going to try to tackle pulling all of that up all right guys with all of the hard work that we have been doing in the kitchen i have definitely been taking some time <laughs> to use one of my favorite beauty tools the blooming face pro this thing is like a wonderful facial massage on your face. If you have been following along for some time, you guys know how much I love this beauty tool. And basically the Blooming Face Pro uses microcurrent technology in order to decrease puffiness. It helps to tighten your skin. It also helps to uh, tighten your jawline and uh, eliminate the double chin. It also helps to increase product penetration. So I personally uh, like using the Blooming Face Pro in the evenings after I apply my moisturizer. And truly I have noticed a difference if I'm consistent in using the Blooming Face Pro. That's the key is consistency. If you use it for about three minutes a day, 
three times a week, you will notice a difference. And I have definitely noticed a difference when I use it on a regular basis. And I'm just trying to use it on one side of my face here so you can see the difference between both sides of my face here. Um, in just a moment. But the Blooming Face Pro is normally $150, but they are offering $70 off with my special link in the description below. They are also going to give that special $70 off to the first 100 people that take advantage of this offer. So uh, you've got to act fast. Plus they're going to include a free ebook called Face Tightening Secrets. So you want to take advantage of this. I have been loving my Blooming Face Pro. There are different settings that you can learn all about over on their website, but this is just such a treat for me in the evenings to use. I love running it over my forehead where I have a lot of fine lines already. <laughs> and anyways, I hope you guys will go check out my link. It'll be in the description below for $70 off. Plus, the awesome thing about this Blooming Face Pro is that if you're not satisfied with the results, you'll get your money back, which I think says a lot about a product. So, I don't know if you can tell the difference just in the time that I've been speaking with you, but every time I use it, this side of my face is just slightly more lifted than this side. It's tighter, and I just love the way that my face feels after using the Blooming Face Pro. So, link will be in my description below, and this is just this has definitely been one of my favorite new beauty tools. But we did end up going with hardwood floors and I was just so blessed. My sister has um, her in-laws or live in the southernmost part of the state and they are near a warehouse where she was able to score these hardwood floors for our kitchen for $1.25 a square foot. Now these floors I believe are what you call cabin grade. So we were so excited about the price. They were like $4.99 a square foot at Home Depot. So we went ahead with this option. It was so sweet of her to get it for us. Here it is in our basement. But I will say, as we started to go through the boards, there was a lot that we had to discard. <laughs> a lot of boards that were just completely unusable. So that was my job, was going through each board and looking for cracks or breaks or knot holes. And eventually we did end up just having to use some pieces because there was just so much waste near the end that we had to kind of go through that pile. But for the most part, we were able to get enough smooth, clean boards in order to start laying the floors. And you can see this tool my husband is using. He had to rent it from a local place here. I think it was like 50 bucks for the nailer for the day. And uh, he has never laid hardwood floors, but you know, that's my husband. He's not afraid to tackle anything. <laughs> he will watch a YouTube video and say, yeah, let's give it a try. He's just not afraid of anything. And I'm just so blessed to have him. Of course, I had to get sentimental and shove a little note in this crack here, just in case anyone finds it a hundred years from now. <laughs> my husband was laughing at me, but he kind of joined in and decided to write a little note there on the subfloor as well. But he uh, he got the hang of it pretty quickly, and you can see just how beautiful the floors uh, match the existing. Um, so the ca the kitchen was kind of built up right with the cement board and the slate, and so we were a little nervous about that. But the flooring ended up being the perfect thickness, um, so we were very very pleased with that. But it was definitely like a slow going process, I will say. Just. They're very, you know, thin boards, two and a half inches, something uh, like that. And, um, but he got quite a bit done on that first day. You can see here we worked together um, to lay quite a bit of flooring. And then on the following day, I, um, Mike was able to finish in the morning. I was on kid duty. And that afternoon, my sister took the boys so that we could just sand the floors. Now, we could have rented a sander, but we just decided to go through and hand sand um, the floors, which created so much dust. And I have, <laughs> I had so much cleaning to do afterwards. We did the best to prevent um, dust from going all over the house by hanging some plastic. But I just feel like dust tends to get everywhere. I will probably be cleaning 
my kitchen for the next couple of months. That's what it was like after refinishing our floors. But we did our best to clean everything. And even, you know, the surfaces of the cabinets, everything kind of had a thin layer on it. And then my husband decided to mop everything uh, before we went ahead and stained. So um, the preparation and, you know, actually the removing of the tile and then the laying of the uh, new flooring and just the cleanup, that's the most difficult part, really. <laughs> we, I don't know if you guys remember, we actually refinished all of the flooring in our home back in 2021, I believe. So you can watch all those YouTube videos if you're interested. Oh, it was so overwhelming trying to choose a stain that didn't highlight the reds in our red oak flooring. And that's what we, what we went with in the kitchen as well, by the way, was red oak flooring. But my husband and I did it all by ourselves. We didn't hire anyone. We sanded everything down. We stained it. It took quite a while for me to find the perfect stain that would help to um, kind of tone down the red, but still be this beautiful medium brown tone. And it just, it turned out so gorgeous. You can see what our flooring looked like before. And then here's an after. So uh, we really wanted the kitchen to match that existing stain. Now, I knew that would be tricky because our original flooring is almost 100 years old and this is brand new flooring, but I feel like for the most part, the stain really turned out beautiful. You can see in the bucket there, it almost looks green, and that's because after some research, I discovered that green is the opposite of red on the color wheel, and that is what helped to really tone down the red oak and give it that beautiful medium brown color. And of course, some of these videos are tricky because we have the lights on and that always messes with the lighting. Um, but I'm going to show you some clips here. Once the stain dries, it's a little dark in some of this footage, but once it dried, it really looked so beautiful. And I, I will say it is a little bit lighter than the rest of our flooring, maybe just one shade lighter. And we were really hoping that a coat of polycrylic would help to darken it slightly. Unfortunately, you'll see later on that it still turned out just a little bit lighter than our dining room floors. And I don't know if that's just because our flooring, it's been two years and so it's just naturally darkened over time. Maybe you guys can let me know if you've refinished wood flooring, if your stain got any darker over the years or what but you can see it's a pretty close match here it is with all of the lights off and of course I'm staring at it here but I think once everything is put back together um, it won't be <laughs> it won't be something that I stare at as much um, but I think it really turned out quite beautiful so that evening my husband applied one thick coat of polycrylic uh, this is the same exact sealer that we used for our flooring throughout the rest of the home. Um, he just applied it with his hand and he's got like a little pad specifically for this that he's using. Um, the space is pretty small so uh, he was just able to do it by hand. And the reason why I chose polycrylic is because polyurethane tends to yellow over time. Polycrylic is water-based, it's not supposed to do that. So that's the hope here. Um, but it is possible, like I said, it looks as if our other floors maybe got darker over time. So I don't, I wouldn't say that they've yellowed at all, but they've definitely gotten darker. So, um, but it could just be the difference in the wood. Now, over the next couple of days, I deep cleaned the entire kitchen. I have one of these little steam cleaners there. Amazing. If you don't have one, I'll link it for you below. <laughs> I also cleaned all of the copper in our kitchen just because it had a layer of dust on it from all the sanding and I thought it was time. I hadn't cleaned my copper in a while, so I actually like it kind of tarnished. I know a lot of people like to clean theirs with barkeepers or lemon juice, but I like the tarnished look. Of course, only I would make sourdough carrot cupcakes in the middle of a kitchen renovation. My husband was questioning my life choices, <laughs> but the boys had been so good and I wanted to give them a treat. You know, they've been so patient throughout all of the chaos. 
Now, we actually made little feet for our cabinets a couple of years ago, and all of them ended up being too short, too small. I guess the wood floors are just not quite as thick as the slate flooring. So um, this is kind of, he's kind of showing you guys what they looked like. He has to rebuild these, but we decided to add beadboard to the sides of the cabinets. Um, and you'll see more of that here in a bit. I'm just putting the chalkboard back together. This is such an easy project. If you have an old frame, um, a window frame or something like that, just paint your wall with chalkboard paint and nail your frame up and you have an instant chalkboard and you can put it wherever. But um, I'm just hanging all of my copper back up onto the rod there and I actually cut down on my copper collection. I had quite a bit up there and I decided to take a few pieces down that I wasn't absolutely in love with. Um, but I'm just slowly bringing everything back into the kitchen. This giant basket that I scored for five dollars at a thrift store I keep above my fridge. Usually in the summertime months I fill it with some sort of you know flower stem some faux stems, um, but during the winter seasons, I just kind of stack a couple baskets up there, and I also have one hanging here on the wall, and I'm just hanging up some linens as well that we took down so they wouldn't get covered in sawdust, and then I decided to go ahead and tackle all of the baseboards. We scrubbed them and cleaned them, but this is just one of those things that they really needed a fresh coat of paint, and although I don't know the color of our cabinets, they were installed before we moved in, I found a pretty close match. It's White Dove by Benjamin Moore. It's almost identical to our cabinet color, so I'm just working on that while my husband continues to add beadboard to the sides of the cabinets and, you know, install all of the quarter round on the trim again since we had to remove that. Um, he's also adding a piece to the side of the pantry, which just that little bit of beadboard, you guys, in these areas added so much character. You'll see at the end when I share the reveal of the kitchen. I just can't believe how those three little pieces of beadboard just added so much more character to the kitchen. And so here I am just giving all of the beadboard a coat of paint using White Dove. And honestly, guys, you can see, <laughs> even though this isn't a quick YouTube video, all of these changes took several days. It was a long process, little by little. We tried to tackle it all. All of this finish work honestly took more time, I felt like. <laughs> than anything else. Well, no, removing the slate took quite a bit of time, I will say. But here I am just uh, adding some caulk and paint to all of these little legs that my husband had to make. He was able to use some of them. I think four he was able to reuse, but he had to make the rest of them. So um, another project that I took on, I wanted to add a little hook to hang my apron again on the side of the pantry, but I didn't like the hook that I had there before. So I found this gold hook in our basement and I just gave it a little makeover using rub and buff and black paint. And I was able to match our cabinet hardware almost exactly. So I was really excited about that. <laughs> Saved a few bucks by using something we already had. So my husband's just attaching this um, to the side of the pantry so that I can hang up my apron and here I am just kind of adding the finishing touches. The polycrylic that we put on the floors actually made them very slick. I remember our other flooring when we first refinished it, it was very slippery as well. Like you guys, if I ran into the kitchen with socks on, I could slide across it. The boys were having a lot of fun so adding this runner is going to help with <laughs> how slippery it is in here. Um, so anyways, in case you're wondering, why are you putting a rug on those beautiful floors? I think it's necessary <laughs> for right now, um, but it was hard to cover them up, I will say. So this is another table that I'm not quite sure on. I had it here before, um, but now that I see it in here, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. I do love this little table, um, but the kitchen did feel so large without it in here. I don't know. I, I'm i thinking about some different ideas I have for the chalkboard wall. So 
it's there for now. I just put it back where it was, but I'm still kind of deciding if I want to do something different on that wall just to open the kitchen up a little bit more. And maybe I can move that cool old table back into the living room. Um, but I'm just, like I said, kind of putting everything back where it was for now until I figure all this out. I'm sure I'm just going to want to live with a kitchen and the new floors for a couple of days, if not weeks, before I make any other changes. So this little stool I grabbed recently at an antique shop. And here is the finished look, you guys. I just cannot even believe how beautiful these floors turned out. I was not expecting them to make so much of a difference in this kitchen. They brought so much warmth. They look so beautiful with the new countertops. I just, I can't stop staring at them. They are just so, so beautiful. And I will say they are very warm on my feet when I go to get my coffee in the morning. The slate was so cold on my feet during those Michigan winters. And the wood not only brings warmth aesthetically, but it also is literally warmer. <laughs> And with the countertops, I just think it was the perfect choice. My mom was right. She was pushing for wood all along. And I was trying to, you know, think of something else that might not be as much work. And she said, you've got to do hardwoods. And she was right. She's always right. Mother knows best. It's so true. Anyways, there's my little hook that we added. And just a few more close-ups of our beautiful new flooring. I will say that it is still, even with two coats of polycrylic sealer, it's still just one shade lighter than our original flooring that we refinished a couple of years ago. I'm okay with that. You can see just a slight difference there. Maybe they will darken over time. I don't know. You guys can let me know, but I don't think it's something that most people will notice. I think that, here, here's a good angle, I think that you really have to stare <laughs> to be able to catch it, but um, oh my goodness, you guys, it's just warm and welcoming, and I love the way it looks with the blue stove. Uh, that was one thing before, I don't know if you remember the colorful slate in front of the stove, it always bothered me, all those different colors, and now because of this beautiful backdrop, I feel like the stove really stands out. All the little feet, for the cabinets that my husband made just adds so much character something so small really goes a, a long way and i love the way those look now i would love to to somehow completely hide our fridge like make it look like an old ice box or something but i don't think my husband is ready for another project for quite a while and neither am i so <laughs> that'll have to wait i think but for the most part Guys, I am just loving our new floors. Let me know what you think. I'm so thrilled with the way they turned out. And I was just so thankful to be able to take you guys along and show you uh, the fruit of our labor. And hopefully if this is something you're interested in tackling, um, our video will encourage you. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.